are to be on fire. Our spirit ought to be on fire for the Lord. We are now heading into a new year, a year of the unknown. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know that Christ holds our hands. So we certainly honor you. We greet the spirit of God who is the head of our life to Pastor Grange. We certainly want to bring greetings to Bishop Simpson and his family to um, uh, uh, the Walters and also to Pastor Bunny Grange. I do know he is not feeling well, but I do hope and, and I know he'll probably log on here. And to all of God's wonderful people, we certainly want to say God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. To the Sunday School Department, we certainly want to give God thanks for you and a wonderful session on this morning. Uh, we certainly thank God for the word of God. Many of us, what we learned today, we learned it in Sunday school. So we are grateful and thankful for our Sunday school department that is working to make sure that the word of, Lord is be the, word of the Lord is being taught and uh, that we are getting information as it related for us to build ourselves within the kingdom of God. We are grateful for that. Certainly would like to uh, just again riff affirm the brethren and let the folks know that uh, uh, as we are experiencing some uh, COVID issues, uh, not just here in Edmonton, but I had the opportunity this week to speak to quite a few of our churches in Toronto. And we realized that uh, there's more than a, a few now that today and probably next week will be going online simply because it seems to me that the third wave of this uh, thing has really taken off. We we are grateful that we have not had anyone that uh, is seriously ill within our congregation or within our group. We are just so thankful that the Lord has protected us. Brethren, about millions of people have died from this. And for the amount of us that have already had uh, experienced it and have lived to talk about it, we ought to be grateful. We ought to be thankful. Every one of us, if we have not experienced it, we know somebody close to us that has. And we are alive to say amen. And thank you, Jesus, today. So we are grateful. So once again, we will be, our entire service today will be online. Uh, I ask that you be patient with us. We do not have uh, the technology that we do have at church, so we will work accordingly. But I do believe that the Lord have a word for somebody today and that somebody will be blessed for the service, for the service that will be uh, going for today. I want to also just bring to our attention that as the time change, we are adopting and, 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 and our norms has been changed. And, and I think one of the things that we have to come to terms with is understanding that our norm will probably never get back to what it was, uh, nor should we want it to get back to where it was. This, this new era has opened up a lot of opportunity for us. Uh, some of us that have unsaved loved one, we can make sure that they're here in the service now. They can be a part of the service if they won't come out to church on Sundays. So there are so much other ways for us to use this as a witnessing tool, and we are grateful for it today. Um, we certainly want to thank God for everyone that is joining. And if you know someone who is home, please send on over the link to them, the number, uh, the, the login number for our our Zoom and the password so that they can join us for the service. I believe that the Lord has a word for someone today, and I'm excited about that. So certainly thank God for that. So at this time, we're going to go into and queue up our praise and worship. It is, uh, 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 we are working on improving some stuff. We ask for your patience for that. As we go about the new year, we have great things in view and great planning going forward, taking us some time, uh, probably a longer time to bring some of these then uh, uh give some of these in effect as we would have expected but we believe the lord so at this time we're asking you to open your your your, your minds and your heart and sing along as we move into our prison worship at this time we're going to keep that up for us and we'll go on into our prison worship god bless you as we enter into our prison worship
nothing worth more? There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your unending Jesus, your presence, Lord. I taste it and see. I taste it and see of the sweetest. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands and give God praise. Let's lift our hands and give him praise. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Worship begins within your heart. Worship begins within your mind. You have to have a heart for worship. Worship is not in the sanctuary. Worship is between you and God. It's between you and God. It's you when you look at the goodness of the Lord. Out of your belly, one scripture put it says, if you open up your heart and just give him thanks for his goodness and for his mercies, you will worship him. You will worship him. But you think of all that he has done. You'll open up your mouth and you'll give him praise and you'll give him thanks. We certainly thank God for the prison worship team that was able to lead us into worship and to create an atmosphere for praise and worship. 
and we thank God for that. You know, you know, you know. Someone asked the question uh, sometime this week: um, Do we believe, uh, Reverend Scott? Do you believe that this uh, pandemic uh, keep uh, lingering or continue or seems to be getting worse? Is as a result of us not to, as the church not learning the message or getting the message that the Lord is trying to bring to us. And as the person you know asked the question, I was not quick to answer because it gave me an opportunity for me to sit down and to think uh, about that question. Uh, and 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 uh, what I what I realized from that is that I don't want to miss the opportunity that the pandemic has given us, the, the opportunity that it has created for us to develop a personal a relationship that it has taught us that uh, Christ or the church is not the building. What has the pandemic taught us? It has taught us that the church is not the building, that feeling his presence is not dependent on if I am in a building structure. Some of us have discovered how to pray because of the pandemic. Some of us have discovered our ministry because of the pandemic. So I am asking him, don't let me miss what you're trying to teach me through this process. Don't let me be in such a hurry to get out of it that I'm missing what you're trying to teach me. Are you hearing what I'm saying, brethren? Don't be in such a, a quick to get a, an answer to the solution that you miss the message that it's bringing. Yes, we're going through a pandemic. Yes, it seems to be lingering, but it would be worse if we are not learning or not getting the message that the Lord is trying to teach us through this process. And I believe in my heart, somebody's gonna come out of it stronger. A church that comes through this is going to come to it that is prayed up, that is fired up, and that is ready for ministry. And I don't know about you, but my heart is in, that, in a good manner because now I know that prior can change you. I know that prior will push you into the courts of worship. I wish somebody in here would know what I'm talking about, would lift your hands and give God praise for being for the ability to grow through the pandemic while others are struggling and fighting and looking for ways to get out of it. The church is growing and we're discovering that through this, we are seeing God manifest. Open up your hands and give him thanks that we're seeing a manifestation of his love, of his grace, of his mercy. What a good God we serve. What a God we worship. And we are so grateful for the wonderful Savior we have. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus rose from the grave. He rose triumph. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that when everyone seems that there is no hope, we know that our hope is within the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry, my friend, because the Bible said it does not matter that even though we sleep, but when the trump of God shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise. We have a hope. We have a hope. We have a hope. Somebody that have a hope, lift your hands and give him praise. We have a hope today. I want a church to know that. Be encouraged. Don't be dismayed. Don't be despondent based on what we're seeing happening. <laughs> Brethren, let me tell you, we're, I'm talking to people at work and it looks like the last sliver of hope is being squeezed out of them. But hallelujah, the church know that it is now that the church is going to rise up. It's now your smile ought to make them ask a question. Are you not in the same world we're in? Are you not experiencing the same thing we are? And if you are, why are you smiling? Why do you have a smile on your face? And it gives you an opportunity to testify and say, no, 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 honey, my faith is not built on what you see, but it's built on Jesus Christ. God bless you. I am so grateful that I am a part of the king, the, the kingdom of, the, uh, of God and that I'm washed in his blood. This time we're going to go into our Bible reading. And uh, we certainly have a, a scripture that we want to bring to you today. Um, we're going to go to the book of Second Chronicles, the second chapter. That would be Second Chronicles, the second chapter. And we're going to have uh, Sister Marcia Park is going to come on and she's going to read from verse one to verse 10. Uh, 
So that's Second Chronicle, the second chapter. God bless you, woman of God. You can come on in and read that for me. Praise the Lord. Greetings, everyone. Greetings to Pastor Grange, Assistant Pastor uh, Scott, and uh, and Bonita Grange. Praise God to all the missionaries, deacons, elders, participants. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just am grateful to be here this morning. As we and I give thanks most of all for the Holy Spirit, which is the head of my life. Praise God. So the scripture this morning is taken from Second Chronicles 2, and it's from 1 to 10. And I will read in your hearing. Praise the Lord Jesus. And Solomon determined to build an house for the name of the Lord Hallelujah. and an house for his kingdom. And Solomon told out three score and 10,000 men to bear burdens and four score, score thousand to you in the mountain and 3,600 to oversee them. And Solomon sent to Uram, the king of Tyre, saying, as thou didst deal with David, my father, and didst send him cedars to build him an house to dwell therein, even so deal with me. Behold, I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual shoe bread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbaths and on the new moons and on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the house which I build is great, for great is our God above all gods. But who is able to build him an house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I then that I should build him an house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? Send me now, therefore, a man cunning to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in iron and in purple and crimson and blue, and that can skill to grave with the cunning men that are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, whom David my father did provide. Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, and algum trees out of Lebanon. For I know that thy servants can skill to cut timber in Lebanon. And behold, my servant shall be with thy servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance. For the house which I am about to build shall be wonderful, great. And behold, I will give to thy servants, the ewers that cut timber, 20,000 measures of beaten wheat and 20,000 measures of barley and 20,000 baths of wine and 20,000 baths of oil. Here ended the, a portion of the reading of God's holy words. May he add his richest blessing and his name be praised. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you yes, so God. much for the Praise reading God. of God's holy word. We mm -hmm. praise God for that. Uh, praise God. At this time, we're going to ask, I don't know if this is Lady Noel, will you be able to open up your mic for us? We want you to come on in and do our morning prayer for us. Um, we want to remember uh, everyone that is in need of prayer. I believe um, Julian, there's a prayer request for Julian's mom who is in the hospital. And uh, uh, we want to make sure we remember that. Uh, do remember, uh, beloved, that we are in our month of prayer and fasting, and we want to also be praying for everyone that have experienced uh, this uh, sickness uh, with the COVID and for so many folks that I've spoken to this week that are not feeling well. We want to pray uh, continuously for them. So at this time, in this same spirit of worship, we will bring in uh, Lady Noella. She's going to come in and take us to the throne of grace. Would you set your heart for prayer as we go forward? Brother Joseph, mother, we also want to remember. Uh, Brother Joseph, ma mother, we want to remember her also in prayer. Come on in, Lady Noel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. 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 God, we give you honor this morning. God, we give you glory. We give you all the Mm. glory. Because you is God and there is none like you. There is none before you, God, and there is none after you. God, this morning with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, God, we come before you, God. We come, oh God, with a mind of worship. But at this time and this season of our life, we recognize, God, that you are calling us to personal relationship with you. Mm. So many times, God, our Father, we have so many, oh God, relationship, but God, we do not have a personal relationship with you. God, at this time of life, as we turn, oh God, our face to heaven, as we worship you, as we call upon you, God, Mm. we pray that you would hear and answer. We pray, oh God, that you will continue doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. But we come this morning as a body to gather God. We pray that you would bless us individually and collectively. God, remember our family. Oh God, those that is not saved. Oh God, at a time like this, God, with signs of the time everywhere. In the name of Jesus, God, we call upon you for mercy, oh God, for those that is out, oh God, of relationship with you. God, tonight, oh God, this morning, remember our leaders, remember our elders, Oh, God, some of them is not well, but God, you is the great physician. Hallelujah. Morning, remember Minister Taylor and his wife, his family in Calgary. God, we pray that the strength and courage that oh. only come from you would embrace them, God, in your loving kindness. God, remember Ella Thompson and his family in Toronto. God, you could do all things but fail. And as we wait and as we hope and trust in you, God, we pray for deliverance. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, mighty God. Remember Bishop Simpson. Remember his family, his dear wife. Hallelujah. Oh, God Almighty, we pray that you would embrace them in your love at this time. Bind them together as a chain that cannot be oh. broken. And help us to stand there, God, by faith behind him, believing, dear God, that you could do all things but fail. Best bless this day service, oh God Almighty. Each and every air, dear God, that come in preparation, God, to hear your word this Hi. morning. Help Thank us to say, oh God, when it is over. Yes, it was good to be here. God bless your man's service, servant this morning. Whoever, oh God, stand to break the bread of life, we pray, oh, God, God, that you would use him to the honor and the glory of your name. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Seal him, oh God, in your mm. praise. Bless your people this morning. God, remember Brother Joseph's mother. God, we pray that you would anoint her with fresh oil from the crown of her head to the sole of your of her her feet. We pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. will be done. Do for her, God, what she cannot do for herself. Oh, God, we know the scientists, we know the doctors is trying their best, Mm. but God, whatever progress that would come, indeed, we know it must come from you. Hear our humble cry today and continue abiding. Continue showing us the way where there is no way and help us to continue remembering church begun at home. So as we at home, God, listening to your word, it doesn't make a difference where we are. Bless your people, we pray. In Jesus name, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on in and just worship the Lord. Will you open up your mic for a minute? 
and let's just come on in and praise the name of the Lord. Let's give him a week in worship. Let's step to the week. Thank you, God. We give you the glory, hallelujah. You know the roads that we are here. You are the Lord of everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. All the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> To have your way, Lord God. To his name. Thank you, and we agree with you. Thank you, and we praise you. Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank you, and we glorify his holy name. Worship, brethren. It is, it is something. One of the things that I, I, I said, you know, here, here's where we are at now, where, where I find that many of us is asking the question, when will we get back to the building? When will we be able to do what we used to be able to do? We, you know, we enjoy the fellowship of the brethren, being among folks, hugging folks, looking across the, the, the floor and see Sister Fine worship. We, we love that. It is encouraging. It's encouraging to see the, the elders and the bishops and, and to see uh, the older folks worship as they walk the floor, as we walk, as we worship in front of the altar. We have experienced it. We've seen it. And, and many of us is asking, when are we, when are we going to get back to something that seems or look normal to us? That's what we're asking. And, and could it be that the Lord is saying that, that, that I'm waiting for you to show me what true worship is? Real worship comes from a place where you don't have no one telling you to go ahead. When, when you have to make a choice to worship him, when you are online, you can mute yourself, you can turn your camera off and not worship, but you made a choice. You made the choice that I'm going to turn my mic on, I am going to put my camera on, and I am going to worship. That's real worship. Real worship is when you don't have no music beside you, but you choose to worship. Real worship is when nobody's telling you to go ahead, nobody to encourage you and lift you up. Your praise is not dependent on the other person across the floor, but you can then out of your belly say, boy, I'm going to worship him. Let me tell you why I worship him this week. Have you seen the roads in Edmonton that we have been driving on over the last couple of days? They have reported that they have not seen, had as much accident in the last three weeks than they have had in years. Yet, many of us have been on the road to and fur, and the Lord has protected us. Oh, you ought to have a hallelujah in your mouth today. You ought to have a thank you, Jesus. Nobody ought to encourage you to worship him this morning. Because if God can take me to work on literal ice and bring me back home safely to a place where I can worship him, oh, you ought to put your hands together and tell him, thank you. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you, Lord. And we worship the name of our God today. I am excited about what the Lord is doing. You should be too, because it's not easy, brethren. But again, as I said, you have to command yourself because when you are when you are conducting service from home, you have to tell yourself, you have to bring yourself into a place where you realize that I don't have the other stuff, but I know who Jesus is. You got to command yourself to worship him. 
I dare you to do that today and watch God bless you. Watch God deliver you. Watch God gives you a breakthrough. I don't know why I have the feeling, but I feel like a breakthrough is at hand. I feel like something is about to happen in the atmosphere. Oh, you didn't believe. You thought you had to be at church for this to happen. No, no, no. I feel it coming through the airwave. I don't know who is at the edge of a breakthrough, but this prayer and fasting, I come to prophesy in your spirit and tell you that 2022 has bring you deliverance, have bring you break, breakthrough. Whatever you've been praying for, the Lord is going to answer it. And it's not going to be based on a building. You don't have to be at Bethel to do it. But because you connect with the Lord. Hallelujah. Online right now. As the Bible says. Immediately. Instantly. Suddenly. It's going to happen. God is going to do it for you. And we are grateful and thankful for all he has done. At this time we're going to take our offering. Because I'm excited for where the Lord is bringing us so we're going to queue up our song for the offering we want every one of you please 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 give and we will give today at you know what we give at give at buc today.com that's where we're asking everyone to give again i like what um elder walter said for many times he said you know i give once so that i don't have to worry about it since it most of it is online if you're not going to be in the building give it so uh, at this time guys i'm, I'm asking everyone to log on to give at buctoday.com uh, and to give your offering and your tithes. At this time, we're going to have uh, our song. I will cue it. Come on up, bring it on up for me, Pastor Green, so we can go into our giving. But before we do so, would you bow your head as we bless our offering and our tithes? Father, we thank you for your love and for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we have to give because you have blessed us and you have given to us. And as we take a portion out of what you have blessed us with, Lord, to give back to you that which is yours, you deserve it all, Lord. You pray, oh God, that as we give, Lord, that you will bless our storehouse, Lord. I pray, oh God, that it will do to work on your kingdom, to build in of your kingdom. And I pray, oh God, for those that don't have to give, that you'll continually provide that they will have to give, Lord. And I pray your blessings upon everyone today that you'll multiply whatever it is that we give unto you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please follow the instruction and give at, give at BUC today. Give God the glory. Give God
give you and he will give you and he will give you the victory Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give yeah, God hallelujah. the glory. Come Thank on, give you, Jesus. God the we glory bless your name, and God. He will give you the victory. If you give God the glory, what will He do? He will give you the victory. And we certainly thank God for that. I am telling you, brethren, there is something about worship. When we know how to do it, it unlocks a certain thing. It releases certain things. So I'm encouraging your spirit that we will do so. Listen, before we get to the word of the Lord, if there is anyone on here who has a, five, a, a couple minutes, we have about two minutes, I want to use it for quick, quick testimony. Somebody who has victory, somebody who has experienced something that they just quickly want to give God a shout out, a thanksgiving, a praise, a worship. We're not going to beg anyone. We want someone who to come on in. How many of you that have it in your spirit, who feels it, who knows what I'm talking about, that God has been faithful and has been good. Just open up your mic and come on in if you are identifying with that. And we'll give you a few minutes for just your testimony. Come on. Is there anyone? Can I? Go ahead. Um, I want to give God thanks for making me up today because many did not live to see 2022. A lot mm -hmm. of people died. And I give God um, the glory for letting us live to see another 22. For all that's happened, he still loves us and let us see another year with our beautiful God. Oh, wonderful. Somebody put their hands together and give God praise for that. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give God praise for that. Anybody else who has a quick testimony report of God's goodness? Come on. Hallelujah. Nope. All right, God bless you. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank, I thank God for waking us up this morning. I thank him for giving us air to breathe. Right. I thank him for uh, letting Jesus die on the cross, even though it's sad. <laughs> All right. We have Appreciate that. Thank God. Somebody give God thanks that Jesus died on the cross so that we might live. A child shall lead them. I think that ought to motivate somebody else to come on in here and say, give God a praise. Thank who else want to come on in here and get some of this and give God thanks for something. Come on. Praise God. Praise yeah. the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jesus. I just want to give God thanks yes. for watching my back. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, um, Friday, um, one of my sisters was um, moderating Friday night, late, 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 um, during about 12 o'clock. She was moderating on this line and she had invited me over. So when I when I went on there, um, I just went in as, as iPhone because I was coming from work. Mm. And I don't think I was really looking presentable. So I was while I was on the bus, I was listening. And then when I got home, mm. it so happened that the, the pastor for the church said, I don't, I just feel like I should pray for um the person I phone. Will you identify yourself? So I mm. identified myself. He didn't know what I was going through at mm. work. And he did not know what was going on in my 
head, my body. He didn't know, but the spirit of God knew. You know, I did not take time out to tell God what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so um that person started to pray and he started to pray for my head and he started to pray for my body and he was mm -hmm. saying, wrap her up, God, in your blood, wrap her mm -hmm. up. And he said something like, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. Mm -hmm. And I'm just giving God thanks that he watches your back when you mm. don't even think he's mm. watching when you don't even give it second thought and mm. I'm so, I'm, I was so blown away by the level of love that God has for me mm. you know when Mordecai was going through God was watching Mordecai's back praise the Lord Jesus and little did a man knew and so I just want to give God thanks to the God who he is and also for my the person who prayed for my sister that invited me and and God enabling me just to join praise right. God because the next day I woke up my head was so heavy like it had a stone in it but thank God today I am blessed I'm feeling fine and I, I who could it be but Jesus I give God praise praise, praise Jesus. God praise God put your hands together for that praise report Put your hands together for that praise report. I can identify with the concept that God has your back. You don't have to fight your own battle. The Lord will do it for you. I would like to take one more praise report, and then we're going to get Elder Walters open up his mic. He's going to greet the church and then present the preacher. But let's get one more praise report in here. I think there's a Thanksgiving going on. Who has a praise report? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am here to give God thanks yes. and praise for all that he has done and yes. has continued to do. I am thanking him for Sister Roche. Mm -hmm. Last two weeks, she was sick. Right. She was locked up in her room. She could not come out. My God. But I am here to say that God is a healer. She's yes. here sitting with me, worshiping. Hallelujah. So it's a testament that God can heal. Doesn't yes. matter what sickness we're facing, God can heal your body. He can touch your mind yes. and he will save you just in time. So join with me today and give God praise. Hallelujah. Today in service. God bless you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Oh, you ought to have a better praise than that. Somebody say it's Thanksgiving time. Open up your mouth and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. You can't find something just thank him for sister Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Glory God. God. Glory Glory God. 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 Praise God. You are a deliverer. Thank you. Are God. Our refuge and you are our strength. God bless you. Let's bring in Aldo Walters. He'll greet the church and present for today. God bless you. God bless you, Reverend Scott. God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Greetings to everyone today, to our bishops. Amen. Praise God, O oh, Pastor, and to the assistant pastors, to all the brethren. Today we magnify the Lord. We join together today, praise God, and say, God is good. Hallelujah. And his mercies endure forever. We bless the Lord for this morning that God has spared our life to see this day praise god regardless of the situation that is around us amen we will continue to give thanks praise god in obedience to the word of god it tells us whatever condition whatever situation we found ourselves in we must always give thanks always regardless and so we are thankful for today that we can come to worship. Yes, it may not be in the normal um, way that we always worship, but we thank God that God has opened up a way that we can be at home. My God, in time past, praise God, we'll be shut down. We would not be able to see one another and those type of things, but we thank God in everything we give thanks. So God bless you this morning. Thank God for the worship thus far and Pastor that um, Scott that led us thus far. So God bless you. It's time for the word. It's time for the word. And right now we're going to ask, amen, praise God, Pastor Grange to come on in. Praise God, Pastor Grange to come on in with the word of God. Pray for him as he come in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God bless you. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we just just give God some praise? Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Open up your heart. We praise your holy name of Jesus. Come on, all over this place. Hallelujah. 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 You're wonderful, God. Hallelujah. We honor your name, Jesus. We thank you, O God, for keeping Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hold right now. Thank you. Marriage is coming back together now. Hallelujah. 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 All to the glory and to the honor of Jesus Christ. Christ, we can never magnify him enough. We can never glorify him enough. Every time we get a chance to praise him, brother, we sing that song, but let us give him thanks. Let us give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We greet everyone in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our moderator, Sister Pastor Scott. Amen. We greet you. Amen. Bishop Simpson, all the other pastors. Amen officers, all the saints of God that are online, amen, to our young converts, amen, and to those that have recently joined the family of God, we welcome you as well, and those that we may not know, we just want to thank God for each and every one that's just come online this morning, uh, just to be with us, and to to hear, and to share, amen, and to, to kind of charge ourselves up for another day, another week, amen, so we can serve, and we can magnify God, amen, good thing we had those praise teams pre-recorded, amen, so In times like this, we have something to deflect on. But as Elder Scott said, it doesn't matter what situation we are in. We're now learning. We don't know what normal is going to be anymore. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, that goes to another church. And uh, he was saying that there's going to be a new normal. He says, we are preparing our church that we will never get back everybody in the house. And now we have to realize that our ministry is going to be far reaching than what we can actually see people. And we'll be ministering to people that we don't even know. And I said, that that's very interesting. It's going, and, and he's saying, it, it's not, a, uh, it's another church in the city, amen. It's not apostolic, but, but he says, there are people that will never come back to church. It's all over. They will never come back to churches. And we're beginning to realize that. So he says, the next level of ministry is going to be, how do you minister to people that may not come to the house? Amen. They're they're they're, they're located outside of Edmonton. They're located outside of our province, wherever they might be. And, and even those inside, uh, uh, this is a trying time for everyone. So let's continue to, to pray for one another. Amen. As we go through, through this time. As Elder Scott said, several churches across the country, some that I know have already shut down for uh, and are on Zoom too as well. There's just so many things that are happening. And I just wanted to encourage the church this morning that um, now more than ever, we need to pray and believe God. When you step outside of your house, we have to pray and ask God to cover us because we just don't know. I remember when we were in Haiti a couple of years ago, um, and uh, we, we were blessing the food the second time we went down. And I said, uh, I want to make sure that I bless the food. Um, um, we, we, sometimes we didn't know what we were eating. We didn't understand the spices. And I said, you know what? I, I wanna, I'm going to bless the food. And, and we do it throughout here. We just say, we, God, we bless you the food and that's it. But, but, but I was blessing the food because it, it, it could have been harmful to us if our body's not used to that food or that system or whatever it is. And so now when we leave our house, it's not just Lord, oh God, I'm going out, cover me. 
But now I think we need to take time to seriously cover ourselves as we go out. And as the children are going back to school tomorrow, I want to encourage the parents, amen, cover your children, amen, before they go back to school and say, Lord, we pray that your protection will be upon them, amen. As Elder Scott said, this COVID is, is not fun for those of you that got it, got it bad, yet you know how serious it is. Uh, hopefully this new variant is not as bad, but you still don't, you just don't know, amen. And so, amen, that's why we're on Zoom. We don't want to take anything uh, by, 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 um, by chance this morning. We just want to do the right things and we'll see what happens next week. Amen. So let's continue to pray for each other and let's make sure that we do pray for everyone that is in the church too as well. Amen. Just before we get into the word of God this morning, too, I'd like to welcome back uh, the Barnabys. I know they're back in town. They've been away, amen, for a little while. So uh, we thank God for giving them travel and mercies. Also to see Elder Grange is back in, in town, him and his wife. Amen. We thank God for bringing them back too as well. Amen. He's not feeling very well this morning. So, um, <laughs> uh, uh, so we, we had to chip in for him uh, this morning. But God is good. And we just pray that, that he will uh, recover and his strength will, will regain. Amen. Just like everyone else, whatever your sickness is, and everybody's just being attacked right now. Uh, so we're just going to constantly pray for one another. Just to remember as well, our national uh, month, this month is National Prayer and Fasting, Possessing and Displaying a Heart for God. Amen. I believe we're going to have a special speaker tonight, too, I understand. Uh, so we'll have someone coming and talking on that topic as we continue throughout the week. Uh, this week is pursuing the heart of God. And of course, the ladies will be leading the charge for the prayer. So we're asking uh, to chain fasting. We'll go from Monday to Friday. And then on Saturday, amen, general prayer for everybody, amen. And we just wanted them to make sure that we do have three to four, maybe even five people fasting every day so that we constantly keep that. On Saturday, the young people will be leading. We'll be leading the prayer, amen, from 9 till 10. But I just feel led in my heart that I'd like to do an extra hour from 8 to 9. And those of you that like to join me, and I said, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, mandatory, amen. But I just feel led to, to be in that extra hour from 8 to 9 and then just hand over to, to the young people at 9 o'clock to run it from 9 to 10. Uh, sometimes, uh, amen, as leaders, we have to go two miles so that you can go one. If you have not joined us before for a Saturday morning prayer, we certainly like to encourage those of you that are online uh, to be with us in the prayer that is perhaps one of the most important services. And I'm going to take that time to, just to encourage you to come. If you know folks are not able to come, you know, call them uh, or that hasn't been here before, call them and let them come out uh, I mean, to prayer. So, so important. Yesterday was beautiful. Uh, we had over what, 150 plus people from across the country that was praying. It, it was just so beautiful to hear their different brethren pray and we feel connected all together. Amen. So this Saturday morning, uh, 9 to 10, the young people will be leading that prayer. And then uh, from 8 to 9, just before that, amen, I'd like to lead just an hour of prayer. And anybody would like to be with me, let me know. Call me this week. Amen. We, we have some serious things to put before the Lord. And we'll let you know that purpose of the fast on Saturday later on into the week too as well. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I, uh, I am always excited, amen, uh, about the word of God. Uh, wasn't expecting, but as soldier, we got to be ready. And as leaders, we we got. And I just there's a word in my heart, Amen, that the Lord just just put in 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 us for this morning. I pray it would be a blessing to each and every one of you, uh, and also those of you that are just newly come to the family of God. Uh, I pray, Amen, that that you'll find the Word of God rich and, and uh, nur uh, nourishment to your body to your soul, to your spirit, and to your mind. It, it, it is always exciting, the word of God to me. I, I just I just absolutely love it. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm walking on the pages of the Bible, and, and sometimes I just start to cry when I read the word of God, because uh, sometimes I see how far I am away from the word of God and from, from there. But, but you know, we've been talking about alignment, alignment, alignment. And, and when we align up with the word of God, it makes our lives so much more, 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 more smooth. Things just, just seem to work, e even in the midst of pressure, even in the midst of, of a temptation and obstacle, when we line up. And the thought came to me that, you know, all of us, most of us have a car and uh, our, our, we've had several cars, some of us over the years, and there's something called wheel alignment. 
just by the natural process of driving, amen, our wheels get out of alignment. Uh, you hit some potholes. Some are bigger than others. It's how you take the, uh, the corners. It's what type of tires you have on, what type of suspension. So many different things impact and affect your wheel alignment that if you just naturally just drive the car, eventually you're going to need a wheel alignment just to bring you back in alignment. And, and, I, and I looked at that. I said, Lord, help us to get back in line with you. So many things, not necessarily sin, just cause us to be off alignment sometimes. But, but God, if you could just bring us back in alignment with you. Hallelujah. And when we are aligned with God, it's amazing what we don't hear. It's amazing what we do do. It's amazing what we don't do when we're aligned. But as soon as we start to get out of a line, just naturally, sometimes it's, a, sometimes it's a big alignment. We better pray, God, bring it back. But when we, God brings it back, amen, what a blessing is in store for each and every one of you. So I just want to say that there is a blessing for each and every one of us in this particular year. God has got something in store. Second Chronicles chapter 2, uh, verses 1. Amen. There's a just a couple of verses I'm going to allude to, and then we're going to just go through our points. So hopefully I can get past the first point tonight, uh, this morning. Amen. And we just pray that, that God will, will bless us. Amen. 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 And uh, first Chronicles, second Chronicles chapter two, verse one says, and Solomon determined to build a house for the name of the Lord and a house for his kingdom. Verse three says, and Solomon sent to Huron, Huron, the king of Tai, saying, As thou didst deal with David, my father, and didst send him cedar to build him a house to dwell therein, so even deal with me. Um, jump down to verse 5. Um, actually, we'll, we'll continue with verse 4. Behold, I built a house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, and on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the house which I built is great, for great is our God above all gods. Verse 6, but who is able to build him a house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Who am I then that I should build him a house save only to burn sacrifice before him? And then jump to verse nine. It says, even to prepare me timber in abundance for the house which I am about to build shall be wonderful, great. Simple topic this morning coming from verse one uh, with three different thoughts is uh, determine to build God's house. Oh. Determine to build God's house. Oh. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we break the bread of life today, God, that your spirit will be real, that you, you will speak to us through your anointing, God. You'll speak to us through your word, God. Father, we pray that our hearts will be changed, our minds will be turned towards you more, God, and the things that we need to do, God, will be in alignment with you. If there be any praise and there be any glory, we give it unto you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Determined to build a house, determined to build God's house. And amen. As we are going through, amen, uh, this month of preparation, amen, preparation in prayer and in consecration, uh, it is important, amen, to, to, to prepare, amen, as, as we go into the presence of the Lord. And as we mentioned a little bit on Thursday, you prepare for a trip, you prepare, amen, for a job interview, you prepare for all those different things. And so when we are coming before the Lord and uh, when we want something from the Lord in terms of just the focus is on him, amen, we ought to prepare ourselves too as well. And as we are about to embark on another year, and we, we don't know the future, amen, we talked last week about yesterday, uh, and now we, we are truly looking forward to, to moving forward as God leads, amen, we, we, we are, how do we prepare for, for that? How do we prepare for prayer? How do we prepare to get into it? And so there are three elements that are in this chapter that I'd like to, to talk about. The first one is Solomon was determined to build. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second element that I want to touch on is you need to get the best for God is number two. 
And the third is, why do you really have to build this house? Amen. And, and you're going to see that coming out. Amen. Hallelujah. Determined to build. When we talk about uh, Solomon building the temple of, of the Lord, we know that the Old Testament is a foreshadowing of things to come. Amen. And so the temple in the Old Testament is also a representation of our very own bodies. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 to 20 tells us, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So I'm looking to the psalmist about to build a house. Amen. I'm looking at us as, as we are moving into to this, this, this new arena, into, into this new, 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 new dimension that we haven't been before. Amen. There's a determination there that we ought to build the house of God, build the temple that is inside of you. We've, we've said it often and often. It's getting that desire, amen, to, to do something for God. That it's all about God. All this stuff around us distracting us. God, if I can just keep my eyes on you, if I can just keep my eyes on you. And the first thing that I, we need to understand is there's got to be a determination in us. Amen. Uh, uh, as we are going into prayer, as we're going into fasting. Amen. There's got to be a determination to want to build this temple. Amen. Solomon was given a lot of wisdom. But it was not merely for him to entertain himself, uh, uh, but it was also to, uh, uh, to, to, for him to be able to have that wisdom to help build, amen, the temple of God. God has called each and every one of you that is on this line to action. There is a call of God upon your life. Uh, you are not born for yourself. In particular, those of you that have just been recently baptized and given your life to Jesus Christ, amen. There is a purpose in you, amen. And there's got to be a determination in you, amen, to say, God, now that I'm coming to you, God, uh, 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 there's got to be something in me that, that's driving me, God, to, to want more of you, to build a temple, to build this temple to the glory and to the honor of God. Well, where do you get that determination? That determination comes from God. One of the simplest prayers, God, give me a greater love for you. Give me a greater desire for you. Give me a greater hunger for the things of God. Uh, when we have got that determination, we got a determination. Uh, we're going to school so that we can uh, study, whether it's for nursing, whether it's to be an architect, whether it's to be a carpenter, it doesn't matter. There's a determination. Nobody puts that determination in you. That determination is in there. You have a determination to excel in your job, and so you should. And so you do the best that you can. Where is that determination coming from? It's coming from within yourself. Amen. Uh, some uh, of us, uh, or we have some folks that have gone to the Olympics. Amen. You go to the Olympics. There's a drive there. There's a determination. Every day that they get up, amen, there's a drive in them. I've got to do the right thing so that I can get better at my craft. I can be number one in the world. So they train. That drive is there. Amen. Some of you as ladies and as men and as parents, you're determined to take care of your family. Every day you get up, there's a determination to take care of your family. And all that I can see in the scripture, this one, Solomon is determined. He gets up and says, I have to build a house for the name of the Lord. And the Lord translates that into me. And he says, we need to have a determination to build a temple, amen, with our bodies to the glory and to the honor of God, as we are determined to go out in the workforce and to do great mm -hmm. things. So we need a determination to build the things of God, which God has placed within us. You are not here by accident, but there is a call of God upon your life. Amen. And so many times we get discouraged. Amen. But when we remember that God has called each and every one of you, it doesn't matter. Amen. What you are going through, but the call is still there. Don't equate your call to somebody else, but 
but equate your call to what God has got upon your life uh, as we are about to enter into this new world, into this new uh, year, as we're about to enter into prayer. The one thing is I'm getting into prayer. The first thing of preparation is God, give me a determination, God, uh, to get something from you. Give me a determination, God, to get into the heart of God. Give me a determination, Lord, to love you more, to serve you more, God, to be more in tune with you, God. Give me a determination, God, to be more in line with you, God. Mm. Father, hallelujah. Father, I don't know where it's going to come from, but I feel that somebody here that has been missing that determination, been missing that drive, been missing that action. Amen. Life is just blase for you. You cannot go forward. You cannot go backward. But God is saying this morning, I will give you a new heart. I will Will give you a new determination. Come on, children. Your parents can't give you that drive. The parents can't give you that determination. Come on, mothers and fathers. Your husband cannot give you that drive. They cannot give you that determination. But I will look unto the hills, David said, uh, where my help comes from. Uh, my help comes from the Lord. Uh, if there is ever a time we need to be determined, if there's ever a time we we need to be persistent. If there's ever a time, we've got to say, God, if I'm going to work, uh, God, I still got to do things for you. If I've got to study hard for the job, I'm going to study hard for you. If there's ever a time that we've got to be more determined and say, God, I got to build this temple for you. I got to do more praying. I got to do more fasting. Hallelujah. I got to do more. Hallelujah. What I need to do for you, God, when I pray, when I read your word, when I do this, the desire Fire will come. The hope will come. Hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, the Holy Ghost in you, uh, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm sorry, I got to go back to old time stuff. When the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, just came out of you. Glory be to God. Amen. The Holy Ghost is not something that you can control and it's always nice and calm, but it's springing up. Uh, it's a well. It's a river. It's even a fire that's burning. Somebody open up your mouth and give God some praise and say, God, give me a greater determination. I can't yeah. fail now. I can't back down now. I can't go back now. I can't turn back now. God, I've said too much. I've come too far. God, give me that determination. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want that determination, God. Bless God, the Lord Jesus. I am the race. I am determined to serve you, God. Yes. Don't nothing distract me, God. There's too much distraction. I don't care who want to come and who want to go, but Ooh. God, I'm determined to build the house of God, that Ooh. temple that you want me to be, God. I am determined, God, to build that temple. Somebody give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. 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 God praise. Thank you, God. Somebody Thank you, God. Give, God. Praise. Oh, give him a determined praise. Somebody open up your mouth. Give him a determined shout. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory Hallelujah. To God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Praise. Love you, Hallelujah. Lord. Appreciate you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let the weak yes. say it. Yes. I am strong. God is calling somebody. You are not to be like anybody else. The oh. man beside you might fall. The man ahead of you might fall. But God has placed something inside of you. You cannot give up. You will not give up. You might be knocked down, but you're not out. You might be cast down, but you are not out. Hallelujah. I don't know where it's coming from, uh, but my help is coming back. Uh, my anointing is coming back. Uh, my desire for God is coming back. Uh, amidst everything else that's happened, there's a determination in you that you've never had before, and you're asking God, Father, keep the fire burning. There's a determination in Solomon, as rich as he was, uh, amen, and with all the knowledge that he had, he said, I'm determined to build a 
house for the name of the Lord. What am I saying? Somebody's got to be determined, amen, as we move into the other parts of the, we've got to be determined, amen, more than ever before to look at your life, um, to look at yourself and say, God, I'm going to build this temple. We're always talking about somebody else, um, amen, but God, I'm determined to build this temple, Lord. This is your house, God, uh, and I want to build it to you, amen, and then before I, I saw the scripture, it says, okay, I'm going to be a temple, but now it's really a temple that's going to be designed for God, uh, Hallelujah, which moves me to the next point, amen, uh, that we want to talk about uh, is you want to get the best for God. If I'm going to give my life to God, I must give God the best. Uh, so Solomon sends to human and, and he says, guess what? You did good with my father, but, but I, I, I want you to also do good with me. What did you do? You send, amen, the cedars uh, to help him build his house. Uh, but if you send cedars to build his house, uh, I've got a greater house that I am about to build, uh, and I need help to build this house. Uh, what are you talking about, Brother Micah? Number two is we need to get the best resources uh, 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 to make us successful in the endeavorment of building this temple. Brothers and sisters, uh, we need to seek out, amen, uh, the right resources uh, that will help this temple to be built to the best uh, and to the knowledge that we know of. Amen. There are people that God is going to put in your life uh, to help you, amen, to become better at what this temple ought to be. No man is an island by himself. Uh, nobody can do it by themselves. Uh, sometimes the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. So sometimes we need somebody else with a little bit of iron to be able to help us, amen, to, to, to get out that thing that God wants us to get out of. Amen. Solomon is seeking material. He's seeking out an individual that can help him out. Hallelujah. 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 It's not just a temple, but it's God's temple. And I need the best. Sometimes we get discouraged because we are all by ourselves. We're trying to do it all by ourselves. And sometimes we think, you know, it looks like we're the only ones going to heaven. That is not what we ought to be thinking. God has got his people every which way. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. But sometimes we need somebody to help us praise Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, that's the song that we sing. I need somebody to help me praise Jesus. Uh, hallelujah, sometimes God brings people in your life uh, to help uh, perfect this temple. Hallelujah, sometimes, amen, uh, God brings wise counsel counselors in our life to help us, amen, shape up this temple. Do not discount uh, the wisdom that is around you. Do not discount uh, the elders that are in your midst and the seniors that we have, amen. They got years of experience, uh, a very foolish man, and I believe it's one of Solomon's son. All he did was he listened to the counsel of the young men, uh, but there is another one that listened to the counsel, amen, of the age, amen. They've got so much wisdom, amen. Uh, this road is not the first time that someone's been on this road. Uh, we need each and every one. Uh, those of you that have just come to the family of God, uh, ask God to bring people in your life uh, that will help you build the temple. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you don't have to build it by yourself. Amen. But God will bring somebody else in your midst. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. I need to implore people to help me build the kingdom of God. Uh, amen. Uh, each and every one of us, if God is so good uh, and the kingdom is so vast, uh, it's, it, 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 it is upon each and every one of us uh, that we seek out other people, amen, that will help us build the kingdom of God. Solomon said in verse one, not only to build a house for the name of the Lord and a house for his kingdom, you are not just there and designed for yourself, amen, but amen, you have been created, amen, to glorify God. 
God. And when you come in that knowledge of God, it is so important that others have that knowledge of who you are. Hallelujah. Solomon is saying, what I'm going to build, I'm going to need a lot of help. Somebody praise God. What God is going to build in you, you're going to need some help, but you're going to need the best resource. You're going to need to pray like you've never prayed before. You're going to need to fast like you've never fasted before. Amen. You're going to need to read the word of God like you've never read the word of God before. You're going to need to be aligned with people that have that same drive, that have that same determination. Let me tell you, if you hang around people that are weaker, if you hang around people that don't believe God, if you hang around people that don't trust God, pretty soon, amen, you're not going to trust God and have that faith in God. But brothers and sisters, find people in your life that have faith uh, that when you're down, amen, uh, they just don't sit in your discouragement like Job's friend, but they point you to the God of your salvation. They'll come to you even in the midst of your tears, and they'll tell you, shake yourself uh, because your God is still good. Look to the God of your salvation. Somebody, I need somebody to help me praise God. Uh, amen. Your ministry is not of yourself, uh, but amen, their God is going to bring other people into your life uh, to enlarge the ministry that God has got inside of you. Our ministry may not all be like Elder Scott to travel here and travel there, but you've got a ministry in your local visit, uh, 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 neighborhood, whether it's at home, whether it's at the job, whether it is, amen, God is bringing people in your life to help sharpen your ministry. Somebody give God a praise. Don't get frustrated when some people come in your, they're there so you can learn to love. Sometimes God put them there so that, amen, you can exercise patience. But there are other people, amen, that God brings in your life in a time of comfort, in a time when you're lacking faith. They're going to help you to increase your faith. They're going to help you to increase your knowledge. They're going to help you to look back in God. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Do not do it by yourself. But hallelujah, ask God to lead people to where, amen, you can be a best of fit in the kingdom. Ask God to lead people in your life that will help you get to the next step, get to the next stage. When we are stuck at one place, amen, God has got to bring other people in our lives that can help us get to the next stage. Give God the glory, give God the glory, give God the glory. But here's what I want to conclude on today, amen, is why do you need to build Amen. Why do you need to build this temple? Amen. And sometimes we have such low self-esteem. We don't realize how great and our God is and what he can do inside of us. And what you think is so small and so insignificant, if God does it in you, it is not small. It is not significant, uh, uh, insignificant rather, but it is significant to, to, to the kingdom of God. In verse five, um, this is the third point. Why do you want to build? Uh, why do I have to build this temple? I'm not asking you, <clears throat> amen, to, to put the spotlight on yourself, uh, but put the spotlight on the temple that belongs to God and the house which I built, he said, is great, for great is our God above all God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The house, amen, that, he, that Solomon is about to build, it's got to be the best house that has ever been built. I saw David build his house. I saw my father build his house. But this house that is being dedicated to God has got to be the best house. And not only the best house, for great is our God above all gods. I've been to the heathens and I've seen what they built. I've been to, to, to what their temples are. I've seen what they built, uh, but my God deserves the best house uh, because he's better than any other God. Uh, I'm here to tell somebody that the house that God is building you, it's got to be the best house. Uh, amen. You've got to believe it in your mind. You've got to get out of that, uh, amen, low self-esteem thing and say, God, this temple, God, is being built for you. Uh, this temple, God, 
is to be better than any other temple because you are greater. Amen. And I want to build a temple, God, that will reflect who you are. Amen. And as I build the temple, as I get down into praying, as I get down into fasting, as I get down into reading the word of God, God, I want you to shape me. I want you to mold me. I want you to bend me, God, so that, God, I can be the best uh, that I can be for you. Uh, we are trying to be the best here. We're trying to be the best there. But, God, can I just be the best for you that you want me to be? Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We were brought up with, with the testimonies. Uh, amen. And some people would testify. Guess what, saints? Uh, whatever God wants me to do, I will do it. Um, wherever God wants me to go, I will go. That still holds true today. Uh, when we get to the temple and begin that God is building a temple, amen, inside of us, not just for us, so that others can see the glory of God. I'm walking and I'm looking for a year where the church will be the church, hallelujah, where the church will rise up in the midst of this dark world, in the midst of this world, amen, that is looking for answers, in the midst of the world that is confused, in the midst of the world that doesn't know if this will be the last string or this will be the last wave. They don't know if the next one will be worse or better. They hope it will be better, but they can only hope, amen. But God is looking for somebody today that is determined to build his house, to build his temple. Let me tell you, everyone that is on this line, before we wake up tomorrow morning, the trump of God can sound. There is a strong possibility. The coming of the Lord is at hand. We better start sounding the alarm. We better start telling people, you need to repent. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to be living a life. You need to be telling others about Jesus Christ. If we haven't told them before, we need to tell them now. Oh, glory be to God. I want you to know something that this house that God is building. It's not to my glory, but it's to his glory. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of God wanting to use you. Do not be afraid of the call of God upon your life. Amen. What is it going to profit you if you go through 2022? Amen. And you have all the money. You have all the food. You have all the clothes, but you don't have the temple of God at its best. Amen. Amen. What is it if you give all your energy to sports, to, to studying, to the job, to family, to this and that, and you haven't given it to God? Oh, but God wants to build a house in you. He wants to build his temple in you. But you've got to have the determination. You've got to have the mind. Why does God want to build a temple within you? Because God knows what's going to happen when he builds that temple inside of you. Amen. He is going to be glorified. It says that God knows our end from our beginning. I love Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think of towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. But just hang on. I like the way the message puts it. It says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. I'm here to tell somebody that God has not abandoned you. God has not left you alone. God is not just leaving you stranded, but God is looking at you and saying, if you're desiring to build my temple, I am going to get my glory through it and in you. The Amplified Version puts it like this, for I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. He he knows what he's planning for you. He knows the thoughts. You are not in the house this morning by accident. The thoughts and the plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. When it is all said and done, somebody here, you know you are going to be victorious. I wonder if somebody can give God a victorious shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's all going to end up well. Amen. The people are going to look at you and 
said, how did you get through? Uh, you just tell them, I've been building this temple for the Lord. Uh, and the glory of God is inhabiting this temple. Come on, saints. Uh, what a blessing when we get to the place. Uh, we've emptied ourselves to let the glory of God fill our temples. It is one thing when he fills the house. Uh, but we're not in the sanctuary this morning. But when the glory of God fills this temple, when I feel his anointing in my body, when I hear him talking to my mind, when I'm weak and he gives me strength and he says, get up my child and go another journey. When I begin to testify of the goodness of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I get to say, what a great God. In verse 11, he says, it is wonderful, great. Amen. When this house is so great, there is no cost that must be spared. There is no sacrifice to great. Nothing must be lacking. And I said, God, I hope you can help us this year that whatever sacrifice we got to put on the table to build your temple, God, that we will build it, God. Father, however great we need this temple to be, God, whatever we need to put aside, whatever we need to put on, God, however more we need to get in contact with you, God. God, help us, Lord, to build this temple so that it can be wonderfully great uh, to the glory and to the honor of God. Somebody come on in and give God some praise in here. Somebody give God praise in here. I'm done. I'm done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I am determined. I need somebody to get a determination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This all needs Amen. I know you did some work last year, but there's greater work for you to do. Hallelujah. There's greater work for you. I can't do your work. I can't do your sacrifice. But to the glory and to the honor of God. Give us a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like we've Thank never you. had before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, there is a lot of people that are discouraged right now. Hallelujah. But you, as a good soldier, you cannot Hallelujah. be discouraged because you're looking unto the God of your salvation. Ooh. I feel in my mind and in my spirit this morning. The determination and the drive is leaving somebody. God is saying, get that determination back. I need you for my kingdom. I need you for this hour. I need you for this moment. Don't take your hand off the plow. This is not the time to take a back seat. This is not the time to say, let everybody else do it. This is not the time to say, I'm going to sit back and see what happens. This world is dying. This world is dying. And the kingdom needs you. Lord, yes, Lord. The yes. kingdom needs you. Yes. There's got to be a hunger for souls for Christ. There's got to be a hunger and a love for the things of God. If there's ever a time that we must be on fire, that we wow. must be on fire, that we must be on fire, it's now. May God help you. Pick up yourself and start to build this temple. Pick up yourself. Get your Bible up and start to read and start to hunger for it. No more just one scripture, but I got to read a chapter, maybe two. Maybe I got to read a book. Uh, I, I, I'm hungry for it. Uh, uh, we're getting into prayer. Uh, maybe it's more than just one minute. Maybe it's more than five minutes. Then the hunger is there. I've lost that determination. But God is saying here to Solomon, I'm determined. If you need help, find the help, but get the best help you can. Why? Because the temple that you need to build has got to be better than what you have ever built before in your life. God is so great. I need somebody 
to help me. In my Jesus. God bless you. God bless you today. I want to build. 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 Me. Come on. Amen. Praise the name of God. My dear, oh, come on. Open up your mic and worship him. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless. God bless. Just in the building of the it's not about me, it's about, about you. you. We are us, we are about the building the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, you're worthy, God. Jesus. Oh, it's like the things that are falling in the house. You're lined up with your kingdom. Hallelujah. Somebody's coming in Anybody, mm. see, not I'm my desire, it's God's morning. design. Yes, and I'm going to readjust. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at my focus and see where I'm going. Hallelujah. Where I'm yeah. What is yes. that? Is yes. pushing me? What is Jesus. telling me? What is it that Thank I'm going Thank after? 2022. God. 2021, it might have been money, it might have been status, it might have been fame, but this year, my focus shall be you, Lord. If I have Jesus, I have everything. I'm not going after stuff. I'm going after establishing and building your kingdom. Alignment, coming back into alignment. What a word today. Coming back into alignment. Somebody just lift your hand one more time and give the Lord praise. Bless Father, we pray Lord. that your blessing be upon Pastor Michael Grange, Lord. We pray that your anointing will rest upon him. We declare a blessing over him right now as he has ministered your word, Lord, with 
power and with authority. Yes, Lord, thank, thank you for speaking you. through him this morning, yes, for the way you have bring forth your word with yes, power Lord. and clarity, realigning us, readjusting us, Lord. Lord, helping us to get back and focus, Lord, to put our priorities straight, yes, know what we need to focus on. We thank you, oh God, that your word came, yes, Lord, yes. and it came with power and it came with strength we pray that the vessel that you use will be blessed will be strengthened and will be encouraged father have your own divine way in his life as we thank you for the gift that you have given to the body of christ and jesus name somebody say amen all over this building and give god praise give god praise we certainly want to thank god thank god thank god for the word of the lord that came so powerfully so timely, so needly. It is a rhema word. It is so easy to be distracted even at the beginning of the year that we, if we're not careful, we will have our focus on what our new year resolution is, which it should always be about God's kingdom and establishing it in, the, in this earth. And I certainly thank God for the word of the Lord that came forth today for our pastor. One more time, put your hands together and thank God for our pastor and the word of the Lord that came forth today. We thank God for that. We certainly want to encourage everyone uh, that is online. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope that your heart and your soul was blessed, that you did receive some encouragement. I know I did, reminding me of what I need to keep my alignment on. Brethren, let us not lose focus on why we're here in our, in our process to, pro to, um, to go after all of these things and goals and dreams and vision that we have in our life. Let's not forget that you can have all of that and lose your soul. We want Jesus. Everything else can come. You know, there's a song that says, give me you, Lord. Everything else can wait. You know, if I get him, the rest is come. I have, uh, there's a song that, that I love that says, I don't just want the gift. I want the giver. My God, I don't want just the gift. I want the giver. It's more important to have the heart of that person who is given rather than just the gift that they're giving. Thank you so much, Reverend Michael. That was a wonderful word of the Lord that was uh, needed for the body of Christ. And as we as a church endeavor to do better, we pray that we'll take this word and put it in our heart as we embank on the week that is coming that will also be a challenging week for us to focus on what our goals is. Every time you get discouraged, remember what you're doing. You're building the kingdom. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a teach with somewhere in either one of my ministry or teaching. I make mention of that it's so important that if you want God to show up or to move in something that you do, all you have to do is to tie his will to it, tie his purpose to it, tie his kingdom to it. He is obligated to then bless it. Bible, the scripture has proven it time and time again. Once his purpose is tied to it, he will then bless it. And we thank God from uh, Reverend for uh, going through that. Just want to remind you that we are on our service on tonight. Please join us as we start at 6 uh, p.m. tonight. We believe that uh, we'll have a special guest that will be ministering to us. We want to encourage everyone to come on back and join with us. I believe that the Lord will speak to our heart just the same way as we've been getting some good word uh, since the beginning of the, word, the year. We have been getting some solid word that will encourage us and strengthen us to go forward. And we look forward to do that. Um, uh, we also want to thank God for everyone that is online here. Just got news that I don't know. Um, some I, I do realize a few folks on here might have known uh, Elder Wright. Some of the older folks, Elder Wright, he moved to Florida. I'm trying to remember his first name. Just got news that he passed away today. Um, um, uh, I think Elder Walters and a few folks on here might remember Elder Wright. I think at one point he used to be out here. I'm trying to remember his first name, and I can't. Uh, he was married to Maisie Wright. <laughs> Uh, can't remember his first name, um, but uh, just got news that he passed away in Florida today. Um, so we certainly want to be praying for that family. It was a close family of mine that I would minister for the, at their church uh, in um, down in Fort Lauderdale quite a few times. And I knew he was sick and we want to thank God for all his goodness. I saw somebody with their hands up. Did somebody have something, a prayer request or something? No? All right. All right. 
God bless you. God bless you. We're going to pray and say our benediction. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. Your word was rich in the house. Your present was fun. And we thank you for this morning, for ministering to us through songs, through encouragement, testimonies of your goodness. But more importantly, for your word, your Rema word that came to align us, Lord, and put us back in position. Set us up, oh God, to focus on what our assignment is, and that is to build and to establish your kingdom. We thank you, oh God, that you have spoken to our heart in such a profound way. Help us, oh God, not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers, Lord. Lord, as we listen to this word, may it act as that which we need to align us, Lord, and put us back in position, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you will bless, oh God, our hearts and our mind, that we'll put our focus on establishing your kingdom kingdom, Lord. Align our desires, our wants, everything that we're going after, Lord. Align it to your kingdom. We thank you for everyone that is online, Lord. We thank you for everyone that has joined us for service, those that are visiting, those that are struggling. Lord, it's not easy being away, Lord, they, uh, being isolated, Lord, being not able to hug and encourage each other, Lord. It's well, Some of us are struggling with it, Lord, but we pray that you'll be our comfort, you'll be our guide. Put your arms around everyone that is struggling, Lord. It's been a while since we leave our home, been a while since we oh, have yeah. been with Longford, one, been a while since that we have get the comfort and the smile, the warm smile of someone that we love, that we know genuinely care about us. So we Thank you that you have brought us together like this. I pray at this moment you'll visit those persons in their home. Remind them that they're loved, Lord, and that they're needed. And, oh, God, as we worked as each members of the body of Christ to enhance and to build your kingdom, we pray for your blessing upon us, Lord. We thank you for all the different giftings that you have given to the body of Christ. We thank you for our pastor that you have used today, Lord, and we pray Hallelujah. that you continue to give him a rhema word. Continue to minister to him the way you do, Lord. Lord, your will, Lord, we come back together tonight with no other reason but to bring glory to your name and to fill your kingdom. Lord, give us the mind to come with excitement, with praise, and with worship. And as we join together, that we'll be able to bless your holy name. We thank you for today, Lord. And it is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad of you. Say thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Would you lift your hands with me and say, Now may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain and abide in us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. We are Praise also praying for Elder Grange, who is not doing well, that the Lord will touch his body and he will heal him in Jesus' name. Greet somebody. Could, with a could you repeat the person you said, the person that died or the family for the person that died? Uh, it's, El, it's Elder Wright. He, I'm trying to remember his first name. I can't remember his first name. He was, he was married right. to Maisie Wright. Okay, that's the one in Toronto. Uh, yeah, yeah, he used to live in Toronto, but he has moved to uh, not, no, no.